Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to the Law Nation Film Session as we take a real good look at uh, this Taco Charlton versus uh, uh, the 2018 film. Uh, we already know that we got strong reservations, right? But we really want to look at every details. Of course, we already know when we bring up Taco's name, we got to bring up T.J. Watt, right? He was a guy that was pretty much we could have drafted. But a lot of people say, well, he's a 3-4 guy. My thing is talent is talent. And you tell, you can tell any coach in this world, give me talent and I can figure out the rest. That's what uh, T.J. Watt can do. He got the ability to edge rush off the thing. <laughs> That's just the bottom line. Burst, the, uh, the disengagement aspect of it, creating fumbles, getting sacks. Uh, we praise uh, D-Law for the 25 sacks in the last two years. T.J. Watt got 20 sacks in the last two years. So you can try to do the math yourself. And I understand, yes, he stands up or what have you, but can he, can he pretty much crash down on field against the run? Yes, that's what he can do. But we're going to look at some of those things and see how uh, the Taco Chartons of the world fit into their particular system and how T.J. Watt fits into his particular system. Football is football, guys. It's, it's nothing new under the sun. It's uh, been the same sport for over 50 years. So uh, the, the name of the game, especially in a past happy league, is getting to the quarterback. <laughs> Regardless of the situation, I guarantee you if I was a betting man and if they had to pick this thing all over again, they would pick up TJY. Yeah, yeah. If they had a crystal ball, they would, they would say to themselves, look, We'll pick up T.J. Watt <laughs> and forget the rest. We'll figure it out down the line. But uh, before we dive deep into this film, I, I want to show you guys the reason why the Dallas Cowboys drafted uh, Taco. And here's why. Uh, they drafted Taco for these, uh, per, for these situations right here. In 2014, Demarcus Lawrence, uh, he played and he only, had, he only had what? How many sacks? They didn't record the uh, playoff sacks, but he had zero. Of course, in 2015, he revved it back up and had eight sacks. Everybody was like, okay, cool. All right, so his third year, everybody was saying, hey, it takes about three years for a defensive lineman or defensive end to get to the groove of things, right? In his third year, he had only one. He was injured. So what happened here after that 2016 year, the Cowboys were saying to themselves, let us just go ahead and rev up that defensive front. Let's find a way so we can get pressure. And they drafted Taco for those reasonings. Because your guy that you drafted, you know, he only had nine sacks that you can count for, right? So in 2017 was a prove it deal. <laughs> and believe it or not, Taco, he actually plays left end. He's not a right end uh, defensive guy. And uh, the problem is, is when you have a Demarcus Lawrence on your team who was able to elevate himself in 2017 to 14.5 sacks, I'll be a monkey's uncle if I was to say, OK, let me bench Demarcus Lawrence to put in Taco on that left side. <laughs> it's just not going to happen, guys. So that's the reason why they drafted Taco, because they was looking at a replacement for Demarcus Lawrence. It's just that. The tacos of the world <laughs> and the Demarcus Lawrence outplayed and outperformed beyond their measurables. Measurables. So that's how this looks like, man. And if we look over to TJ's Watt comparison versus a Taco Charlton, we can see that the numbers is just all in favor of TJ's. You, you can actually see with your eyes 20 sacks opposed to four. Of course, uh, you know, 27 games played. TJ Watt, 31 games played. You can go back and forth with that, but to me personally, I don't care if he's a stand-up edge rusher or put the hand in the dirt edge rusher. If you can get to the quarterback and if you can stop the run, then you're winning the game. That's just how it goes, Cowboy Nation. I wish I can change it and make it up a little bit better for you all, but the reality is that, you know, it's just what it is. <laughs> I can't make this thing up. The reality is the reality. But let's look at some of the film. We're going to go all the way back. We're going to look at some of the TJ's Watts film. And then we're going to look at Taco Charlton's film. Okay. 
Uh, appreciate Stellos. Thank you for making a donation to help grow the nation. Taco can only get better. D Law, <laughs> 21.5 million for six years. I, I feel you on that. Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of cash. That's a lot of money. But you know, when you make the donation to help grow the nation, you know what we got to do. Yes, indeed. You bringing them out. <laughs> All right. So let's look at it from here. Talent is talent. And, and the main thing is the name of the game is getting to the quarterback, creating pressure off the edge. We'll see old boy right here. You look at him. He wears number 90. This T.J. Watt. Let's see what kind of move that he's going to do. He got the bull rush, meaning that he got the strength, whether or not his hand is in the dirt or not. <laughs> he got to get between these two guys. So if, even if it was a 4-3 defense or if it's a 3-4, you still have to get beyond these two oppositions. Watch how he used his disengage power, split the D, split the D, <laughs> swipe the ball down, turnovers, takeaways. Well, split the offense, but you know what I'm talking about. Split the defense like a basketball move, split the D, and then this is just pressure off the edge. When you're talking about edge rushing in the National Football League, it's about getting the ball away from the opposition right it's about crashing off and securing this edge and we're going to show you some plays as well as off the uh off the run <laughs> something about tj <laughs> when he gets to the ball he's swiping it down <laughs> you saw that ball bounce on the ground and that's murder right there let's just rewind for a quick second burst speed is everything you want off the edge and and <laughs> trust me i don't like it at all i love it i love it Oh, yeah. He said, I, ooh, look at that burst off the edge. Kill him. <laughs> Y'all saw that murder. Did you guys see that murder off the edge? That's what I want. And, and that's what I like to see off of an edge rusher, whether you play 4-3 or 3-4, regardless. I know it's a wide nine. He's wide, lined up wide, comes around the edge. And, ah, uh, boy, make him fumble the ball. I can't make this stuff up. Uh, Carl, he says he was still – uh, franchise Dak and, and, and pay everyone else. I agree. You know, franchise Dak for next year. If you still have a your reservation strongly on Dak Prescott, I would do that. Uh, this is TJ, I believe, against the run. And, yes, you want to secure that edge there, especially when you have an edge control. Shout out to the women. <laughs> Shout out to women that use edge control. You want to control that edge and still crease and get up and knock the quarterback or the running back down. And remember, the LOS is the imaginary line that stretches all across the world, right? So as this particular uh, playing down on the edge, you want to see if the guy has strength enough to secure and also push back that line. So that's what we are seeing right here. Uh, Bob Money says Dak needs to run the rock more. I agree. I agree. I agree. Hustle factor. <laughs> Y'all saw that ball bounce up like a basketball? <laughs> Well, we're going to see it from another angle, and then we're going to look at some taco film. And, and <laughs> guys, Omar says taco is a bust. Whew, you saw the hand disengage. Scoop. Fumble. All right, so what we're going to look at at taco film is his ability when he plays on the left side. We see a little burst there, and he gets out to the quarterback. And, and, and this is what I like out of taco. To me personally, he is a left edge rusher. He's not a right edge rusher. He plays faster when he comes off the left side. My thing is the Cowboys don't have room, longitude and latitude to bench Demarcus Lawrence for a taco. That's just crazy. That's crazy talk. But that's where he plays. He's been forced to play right end. And uh, he's just not explosive off the right end. And we saw on tape that De Dorrance Armstrong outperforming him. Get gauge, disengage, push back, and get to the quarterback, creating quarterback pressure. Uh, this is the game he subbed in for D Law. And you can see that's a different type of taco. <laughs> We're looking at some street tacos now, right? Watch this off the edge. First off the line, remember this is the imaginary line that goes all across the world, right? We're gonna see the trail, gonna cross his face come across in the inside that's fast tacos right there that's what we want to see guys we want to see that version of the taco but the problem is 
He's not going to see that field playing on the left side. <laughs> no way. He's not going to see that field. That's a nice little twist stunt. Get the pressure up the middle. He got the length. He got the range. But he only have one set of moves, right? <laughs> what two? He got a spin and a bull rush. And one can say that he's not the fastest guy on his planet Earth, especially playing in the inside. So those are, and he's not the strongest. But what I'm looking at at Taco is that maybe year three, we can see a little bit more of the growth factor. And if the Cowboys decide to move on from Demarcus Lawrence, maybe you'll see that guy more on, the, on their side, creating some type of pressure and creating some type of getting up the field. Remember, it takes about three years. And I'm not saying that he's the best thing since sliced bread. And I'm not saying that Demarcus Lawrence should be the guy that's gone. But it could be a possibility that Taco would be that guy that's going to secure it off that left, left, that left side. Now, we saw on this play, Hustle, get up the field and get the tackle. This is not me chopping up film. If you got the all 22, go to NFL.com, type in Taco, charge his name, and you'll plug it in and you'll see these exact same films of his snaps. Did he have a lot of snaps? No. My thing is, I was listening to a show earlier this morning with Big Game James, and he was saying that he's right up there from the area where Taco is from, and his coach and his high school coach were saying, hey, the kid got the strength, he got the ability, he just don't play <laughs> on the right side. He's better at left. So watch, disengage, still get the runner down. Remember that LOS, guys. It is. <laughs> It is. It's, it's one of those things where a lot of people was looking at it like, hey, year three for DeMarcus Lawrence. We saw a little spark. We saw a little spark with him in 2015. But in 2016, that was his, year, his third year. And we just didn't see anything from there. And then 2017 came around. And everybody was like, wow, Tank Lawrence is the man. Now, I'm not saying we're going to wait four years to see whether or not Taco can do it. Because for, to me personally, I don't see Ben. I do not see the, uh, the, the, the the actual push from the LOS when he plays. Now, we've seen that spin move several times, but it works on this particular play. Uh, and watch how he secured the edge off of this particular um, uh, front right here. Securing the edge. Spin. Separates. Secure. It's going to be another place that we wind a little bit too far. Yeah, so this is going to be a line where it's remember, you don't want the runner to get anywhere between this side of the field. You want to see if, if Taco can be a chasing Taco, right? <laughs> Watch how you secure the edge. Burst off. Edge control, baby. <laughs> that's good, guys. That is good. I, I like this, and it's uh, and that's something that I, I like when I see Taco play on that. That, that left side but let's flip him to the right side of the field and we will see a different version of taco uh, this is him against the run yes you want to see if he can widen his base move parallel and get to the runner that's what i want to see off of this play disengage parallel shut their running lane off not bad at all not bad at all bob money says cowgirls <laughs> shout out to bob money <laughs> Yes, yeah, so who else we have out here? Uh, Kerry Pohl, appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in to the nation. Thomas Wheeler, yes. Smack the 49ers every time, yes. I call them the 40 winners. Purse off that line. See if he can disengage. Spinning, looking for the runner. His inside, it's short yardage right there. Hey, we want these uh, defensive front to stop that nasty, dirty yards. <laughs> And uh, when you have that length, when you were six foot, wait, six foot six, six foot seven. If you put a little bit more pressure and from the inside and you have help into the inside and maybe you give Taco some more sandwiches to eat during this offseason and can slide them into the inside here and there. Maybe you have a little bit better player into the inside as well. Let me know how you guys feel about that. Yes, indeed. <laughs> crazy chipmunk appreciate you for tuning in to the nation let me know how you feel about tacos <laughs> hey that was a nice little rip move there dipped that shoulder and was able to get the separation to get the running back down for a negative yard <laughs> stellos is at 40 winers yes 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 uh, parallel disengaging 
Taco got some some young man strength. It's not the strength that we look for from a burly defensive uh, front like a number 99, as you can see right here, Antoine Barbecue Woods. It's not that type of strength. But it's, it's, it's manageable enough. It, it is. <laughs> yes, it's the <laughs> Savage Tom said, Taco needs steak. Yeah, give the man a steak sandwich then, right? <laughs> With two pieces of oil, white bread, squeeze them tight. <laughs> that would be nice, right? Put some, put some uh, weights and some bricks in the pocket, right? <laughs> this taco line up on the left hand here. Let's see what he does off of this uh, release right here. Really appreciate each and every last one of you all for tuning in. Uh, got a little hand there. Got a little hand in there. Oh man, the dad skin, four skins, red skin. He he off start. Jumped off sides on this. Jump, he jumped. Try to anticipate the jump too quick. We don't need them type of tacos. The most stale tacos right there. <laughs> this is every snap that was recorded on the All-22 from Taco Charlton of 2018. Really appreciate each and every last one of you all for tuning in to the nation. Chris Perez, appreciate you. Twitter Bay, what's up? Twitter Bay Awuzie, the coldest name on Periscope, man. I promise you. <laughs> Collapsing that inside, allowing the small minimum amount of yards. <laughs> Watch how you squeeze. Squeeze. What? You squeeze there right here. Squeeze. <laughs> Coach, said, Coach said, keep them hips open and squeeze to the edge right there. He was able to squeeze around there. Y'all remember that guy, Sean Squeeze him? <laughs> hey, tackle for loss in the backfield. That's what I want. Taco can try to jump off. He, he can try to jump off from the snap. Look at the LOS. This is what this is what happens when you get some work helping into the inside. <laughs> he got that. He got that range enough. He's lengthy enough. Huh? Over pursuit. Over pursuit. Taco. <laughs> <laughs> but he still, hey, that shows that he got a little, he got a little motor to him. It wasn't the fastest over pursuit that I saw in my life, but he still hustled and bustled, and they gave him a half of a tackle off his play. Over pursuit, over pursuit, over pursuit. Get around that edge. Still chase up field. <laughs> yes, indeed. Look at this. Is going to be the slow bend around the corner. Ben, no Ben. It's just that when you see Randy Gregory do it, that shoulder blade touch the grass. You know, we just not you. You just not gonna see that from Taco. I'm for real. But it's still at the end of the day, he got to have a tackle. I didn't like this play at all. They pushed that whole just some good dirty yards by the by the uh, by Kerry is Kerry Young Johnson. Good dirty yards by the Detroit Lions. They gonna take this. And call it a belly smash and just run it right up on us. Mm. Smash, 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 smash. Boy, he got choke slam in the process, but I love the, the, those little dirty yards. Taco got fooled a little bit. Let's rewind a little off, off the edge. Oh, nope. Still crashed up field. Minimum gain. Yeah, he thought the quarterback was going to be the keeper. Change of direction. That's what we want, right? <laughs> Telling you, man, Taco is a left end. He's just trying to play right, trying to play it. Lost all the space. Still tackle the guy for for minimum gain. Yes, indeed, Cowboy Nation. Yes, indeed. Now look at this, old Matthew Thafford. <laughs> that's what that, that's the taco that you guys want, right? Hard shell taco. He ain't Taco Supreme on his plate, but man, did he crash and get up field? Watch out the burst. Hut, hut, hut. Your mama. <laughs> Shot that field. Remember uh, Tecmo Bowl back in the days when you were able to blitz off a of play? <laughs> this is how he wins, the anticipating the snap. Jump off. This is the fastest burst off the LOS that I ever seen Taco do for a minimum game. Now, Taco did say that he had an injured shoulder this year. So that's why he was saying that he was benched most of the time. But we will talk about that a little bit later. 
This is Taco against the Seattle Seahawks. I call them the Sea Chickens. Minimum game. <laughs> Gotta let some one of the mods block, man. But who's a 49er? <laughs> Shout out to the 49ers that's just joining joining in to the nation, man. Look, that's what we like. We 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 like to have a little teams from other fans from other teams to, to, to jump on in here and watch some of the mighty Dallas Cowboys film as we study as we begin to look up everything to see how we can better improve ourselves remember player evaluation is 365 and uh, it never ends guys it never it never ends boy Taco was in, in a lot of rundown situations they put him in a lot of possible run they didn't have him as the uh, as the guy that, that you have put in the insert in as possible passing downs, they like Taco against the run. They wanted to use some of those long, lengthy arms that he got out there. At the well, and this is how they utilized him. Uh, and, and let Taco say uh, he he he's better against the pass from Taco point of view. But I think that uh, Flows Infinite says a uh, hard Taco. Yes, <laughs> but uh, I I think. That with a little bit more grooming and a little bit more opportunity, if given to him, then we probably see his guy blossom just a hair or just a little bit more. Watch how he sealed against that run. Hey, that's a good parallel move right there for minimum game. And I, I think off of this particular play, uh, we saw a little shoulder dip. Let me see. Uh, get the runner down. That's what we want. Get the runner down. That's what we want to see. Line up on the wide nine. Way out here on the edge right here. And he's just going to try to disengage from his guy. And get this runner down. Dip. Put that shoulder in there. Watch how he got the hands right right there. Number 76 is reaching too long, long on that play. Just ready to not get that other hand around. Bend a little bit. So that's using your... Your, your God-given length on that play. And this is his sack right here. I, I can't blame Taco for this one. <laughs> we got to give him credit credit when credit is due. He's lined out wide. He got, pretty much, he got ta he got what, Crawford into the inside helping. This is before Antoine Barbecue Woods was giving some some snaps. And he just came off the edge. <laughs> Zero bend, but just straight hustle. <laughs> yes, indeed. Pressure. He could have had a sack, but I like pressure. Remember, pressure is sometimes to me is better than a sack. Give it to this situation, especially if a DB can get his hands on it. That's turnovers and takeaways. And then that, that's also uh, Eli. Eli, there go that old broke down spin move. He tried to spin it to the inside. Hey, the other team said, if we've been watching tape on you, Taco, you can't spin like that all the time. <laughs> Watch this right here, Cowboy Nation. Watch how he gonna try to hit them up, hit him up with the spin. Gonna get caught up into the inside. He said, "Whoop!" <laughs> that's that. That's that move. He's too high. And if this, if this tackle had any sense, all he had to do is lift up just a little bit and, and shove him. Mm, no, nah. no, nah, he tried to grab him. Man, just shove that man into the inside of your hands right there. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Stellos, I know you're handling it. I know you're holding it down. This is a pickup of a fumble. And, uh, and of course, Taco was right there around the ball. Guys, I'm not making this stuff up. This is Taco Film Sessions. Let me know how you guys feel about Taco. This is going into his third year. Normally, players blossom in a third year. Remember, by him being a first-round draft pick, you got five years. You can always exercise the fifth-year option and things like that, right? Players tend to ball out <laughs> during their contract year. And to me personally, with all of the hiccups and, and all of the foolery that we, be, we had with the Randy Gregory's of the world, right? 
and and believe it or not within those first few years with uh d law we had a little hiccups with a broken foot with ped usage and then we also had some other things with his back the boy put the team on his back don't get it twisted now i love what d law can do and shout out to the laws but taco been a clean sheet of paper so let me know how you guys feel about the tacos of the world and let me know is is it any hope for the taco or is it just a, a lost cause with him uh taco said earlier today on the uh twitter machine as we call it is that hey he says here me once my shoulder gets 100 percent i will be ready you see how he danced he see how he got this little kid dancing in, in in his video or what have you he's so he's saying that his shoulder was the issue his shoulder was everything that was wrong now we already know we talked about this at a lot of different levels with cowboys offering d law the salary that's over 25 20 million but he said no 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 20 million is not enough for me six years 120 million dollars is just not enough it's not going to crack anything for me i want this money right here i want this amount of money now that's 141 million six years 90 million guaranteed i, I don't know how we can find those particular numbers but the, for those who out there like to crunch the stats and crunch the numbers go ahead <laughs> be my guess be my guess put your magic to the test type of situation just do it for me because <sighs> to me that's a lot of money that's a lot of money i know what that money can bring it can bring you what 21 pressures for uh tack what 21 tackles for loss leading the nfl in pressures uh demarcus lawrence bring you so much to the table let's see if i can find some of those stats uh for everyone um uh, pretty much this is like a grading scale and, and we looked at this before we looked at this before and and this grading scale is from 2017 through 2018 the ranking is 90.2 right and, and just to give you guys a, a little knowledge on that they got it ranked right here uh it says defensive edge ranking rank number one the market value for 19.6 is ranked number two i don't know who they got for number one but you guys kind of figure out what i'm saying it's it's a it's a conundrum basically either you're going to reach deep down in your pockets and pay this guy and not afford to pay somebody else and say that okay d law is going to be the savior of this defensive front four and maybe the hiders of the world and also uh the uh, christian coverton if we can sprinkle them into the inside and maybe the emergence of Dorrance Armstrong, this whole front defensive four will be okay. Uh, LVE, he's going to be a little bit bigger, right? Uh, uh, Jalen Smith, he's going to he's going to be nastier too. I, I did this uh, uh, was a little clip of LVE earlier, and we can see that I said in here once this off season. We are going to work on those little baby arms, <laughs> and he'll be ready for year two. He's going to be bigger, stronger, and faster. That I can agree. LVE is going to be bigger, stronger, and faster next year. It's just a given. It just takes time, right? Now, what can help LVE out tremendously if we get that big belly hanging over the knees defensive tackle, and maybe we can find somebody like that in the draft. Reach out to my brother from another mother. No other. Don't look like Danny Glover. Reach out to my guy, Vodge Lombardi, about that. See who he has in mind uh, with the 58 pick. If we can find that big, fat, nasty plug to fit into the inside. To help out the Antoine Barbecue Woods, right? To help out the, uh, the Covington kid. To help out Malik Collins. And to help out these two brothers right here. Boy, it's what? Salt and Pepper. The LVE uh, tribe right here. And the, uh, the Jalen... Would. yes yes uh aaron gonzalez says cj anderson <laughs> uh can help out everybody right <laughs> where he ran all over us uh let me know how you guys feel about the aaron donald's uh, uh d law asking for aaron donald's money let me know how you feel about that yes indeed cowboy nation uh dexter lawrence swaggy d <sighs> we can only dream right we can dream about a Dexter Lawrence. 
Uh, don't try to blame the Rams game all on Demarcus Lawrence. This is from C Money. I didn't see. I didn't say D Money. I didn't say F Money. I didn't say G Money. I said C Money. Said don't blame the Rams game on D, D Law. They trap blocked D Law. They didn't run the ball but twice towards his way. So I, I agree in certain factors with what C Money is talking about. We were not prepared for the Rams. <laughs> like the old wise man says, it's better to be prepared for an opportunity and not have one than to have the opportunity and not be and not be prepared. And I'm telling you, Cowboy Nation, we, we were not ready. Uh, uh, what's that uh, little meme uh, out there, a little gif of uh, Ke with Kevin Hart when he said, <laughs> we're not ready. We wasn't ready. Brandon, thank you for tuning in from the scope. Appreciate you. Dexter Lawrence is another William Perry. This one from D. Will. Man, I would try to turn it back with flips if we get D. <laughs> that another D. Law into the inside. That would be nasty. Um, Blue Blood Cowboys Law Lawrence. See, it's just funny saying Lawrence, man. That's my name. <laughs> Law needs to take twenty million. Boy, if they offer Law Nation twenty million, just give me the two, and I can give the rest to to, to donation I, I'll donate the rest to everybody in the chat box you give me the two million and I'll donate the rest to everybody in the chat box <laughs> and we have we'll be parlaying everywhere I'll be at every game right uh, this is from Thomas Willer Willer he said he isn't Aaron Donald he doesn't deserve that money <laughs> he don't get pressure consistently and we talking about Demarcus Lawrence right <laughs> Let's look at let's look at the stats, man. Let's look at the stats. Let's see what the stats would say. Uh, like I said, I really appreciate each and every last one of you all for tuning in to the nation. It's a hard battle, man. It is a hard battle when you're talking about players in general, right? And uh, what year was uh, Aaron Donald drafted? You guys know? Let me see, Donald. I think it was 2013, right? We're gonna look it up. We're gonna, yeah. No, they drafted in the same year. Okay. All right. So, D-Law and Aaron Donald drafted in the same year. And we're going to pull those stats up to see what you guys are referring to. Get results. they both about the same age, right? All right. So, games played as a major factor. Aaron Donald played 78 games. D-Law played played 64 games all right so of course injury played a major role Aaron Donald from the inside bringing pressure from the inside 59.5 sacks Demarcus Lawrence 34 forced fumbles you mean to tell me this brother from another mother got 13 forced fumbles I mean when he pop you that ball is bouncing out like a basketball and then, uh, of course, forced fumbles with my brother from another mother. Nine of them. That's nice. Uh, fumble returns as for D-Law. He jumped on the ball a little bit, bit, a little bit better. And then he got an INT for 13 yards. <laughs> so on a per game basis, right? You're talking about solo tackles, 2.4. D-Law coming off the edge. He's going to give you two independent sack tackles a game. And uh, assistance, of course, uh, a 1.1 he don't need that much help right so do, so does Aaron Donald but you know coming off the inside let's look at um of course sacks of course is similar in the sense but a point eight is a little bit higher than a point five so stats man <laughs> either love them or hate them but man this taco stat versus Watts man let me just look up uh, TJ Watts indiv individual uh, sacks and uh, six foot four, two hundred and fifty-two pounds. Of course, we love to hear those measurables there. Um, let me see. Uh, six four, two fifty-two is somewhere in the wheelhouse of D Law. Let me see if I can pull that around. Let me see what's D Law's measurables. Let's see if I can find out D Law's measurables. I think it's similar. Six foot three, two sixty-five. Just a little shorter and a little bit bigger. Let me go back, and we're going to look at this right here. Really appreciate each and every last one of you all for tuning in to the nation. All right, so for the first year, he got seven sacks. And then for the last year, he made the Pro Bowl, 
Got 13 sacks. That's not bad, Cowboy Nation. <laughs> Especially for an outside edge rusher. That's crazy, right? Taco is still on his team. Yes, he is. Taco is still on his team, Cowboy Nation. All right, so TJ Watt is only going to get better. Look who his brother is. It's from C Money, not D Money, not G Money. C Money speaking the truth over here. Uh, Donald is way more consistent than Law, but when D Law is pushing on all cylinders, man, he just is good. Yes, it's from Thomas, man. I agree. <laughs> Look, think about this, Cowboy Nation. We're talking about quarterback pressure. We're talking about tackles for loss. And then we're talking about sacks. <laughs> DeLong been nasty with those two things in the last two years. 14.5 sacks uh, 2017. And then 10.5 sacks this year off a of bump shoulder. One can argue the fact that if that shoulder was okay, then maybe he could have had 16 sacks. Who knows? So um, it, it's a conundrum piece whether or not the Cowboys want to pay DeLong or not. It's going to be something that they're going to have to figure out whether or not what is the best move for this team going down the long way <laughs> I, I made this uh, uh i guess somebody asked well law how do you feel how do you feel about uh d law's contract situation should the cowboys pay them pay him and i said this right here and i forgot the person i was talking to i said if you decide to pay d law now let's say the cowboys say okay we give him 22.5 million and we give him the uh, guaranteed of 91 million 120 million overall let for six years divided into whatever number you want uh he takes that deal i told him that if the dallas cowboys do that that means that they must try to win now there's no i'm trying to win three to four years down the line you must try to win now if you try to sign D-Law for that particular deal because your window of opportunity is going to be so minute. It's going to be smaller than it would be if you were to say, okay, I'm going to trade D-Law for a first and a third or a first and a, and a conditional third and a second, what have you, depending on how he plays on the opposite team. and Or next year first and the next year's third. However you craft up that then your team window will be extended because now you don't have to worry about paying uh, somebody $22 million a year per se. That's how it looks like, you know. So that, that type of situation is what the Cowboys need to really look at. Uh, either they're going to try to compress everything and win, put everything, put all of their money in one basket and say, okay, we're going to go for the juggler now. Meaning that we're going to pay D-Law $23 million a year. <laughs> for stretched over six years or what have you but dog it they better try to squeeze everything in now because if what year three year four into that contract they're gonna have to cut some major people they're gonna have to not pay the quarterback they can put the quarterback on maybe a uh what you call that a franchise tag him and uh squeeze uh, ezekiel elliott push his contract out to his fifth year and uh, Ezekiel Elliott won't be happy about it <laughs> because the Ezekiel Elliott is going to be uh, another guy that's going to be the NFL rushing leader next year. This year, coming around the corner, he, he's I don't think that there's nobody that's going to step it up better than Ezekiel Elliott. <laughs> He'd been quote unquote, if Roger Goodell never put his hand into the mix, Ezekiel Elliott would have been a three time rushing leader. I kid you not, but you know, it's it's. It's fickle in a sense of how the salary cap compresses these teams. And the teams that draft well <laughs> get get punished. It's crazy. Remember, I have this thought, whereas the, the, the guys that you drafted on your team, you should have some type of discount rate, some type of this player don't count 100% against the cap. Maybe that their salary only counts 30% or 40%. And, and it will still keep parity in the league because that means that you still have to draft well. <laughs> to me personally, the NFL, the collective bargain agreement, they need to sit down, have everybody in the room, shut and lock the door and say, OK, we got to figure out something. Because to me personally, I love the team. <laughs> I don't love the individual players per se. I'm more of a team guy, <laughs> you see. So it's hard for us to look at things in certain parameters and say, well, can you imagine Michael Irvin putting on some other uniform? 
Can you imagine Troy Aikman putting on another's uniform, another team uniform back in the day? A runny lot for those who, who, who root for the 40 Winers uh, and having a whole different uniform. I know he played for multiple teams, but you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Sip the Truth 34. Man, appreciate you, man. I'm talking about Sip the Truth. I will pay Zach Deep in. <laughs> I said Deep. Zach, Zach Dak and Cooper before I will pay D-Law. All of that money. We got, we got our triplets. We cannot afford to split them up. Trade D-Law for a first and a second of this year's draft. Yeah, but you got to see. This is another thing. Uh, we have to bring out into the forefront. And that's a good. That's a good. It's a good saying. Sip the truth. Um, this is another thing that we got to take into play. Teams are going to look at Demarcus Lawrence and say, "Okay, I would love to give Cowboys a first and a second, maybe even a conditional pick of a third for next year's." But how will I know that I'm getting a good commodity? Meaning that. Can he survive uh, uh, this this surgery situation? There have been reports out there for that that torn labrum or labrum, however you pronounce it, that it takes three to four months for that to rehab, right, or to heal correctly. There have been some cases where it takes six months at the most. Now, most players that get this type of surgery are baseball players, right? And that's not as much of a contact sport as it relates to football. Now, what if I'm playing devil's advocate, D-Law get this surgery done and we will say, OK, we're going to reach deep down in our pockets and we're going to pay this man one hundred and twenty million, ninety one million dollars guaranteed. And it takes him six months to rehab. And then he don't get the surgery done until mid-July. Oh, my goodness. That sounds like a Cowboys thing to do, right? So, <laughs> Dre the Great said three to six months. Sign him right now. <laughs> I don't know, man. That's a long time. And, and, and everybody don't react to surgery the same way. Uh, hey, and, and I'm not putting this on anybody. Whenever you got a knife that's going to cut into your skin and it's going to repair something, <laughs> it, it, it's it's a fickle situation. All right, Miss God and Pro, appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in to the nation. Gurley had 19 touchdowns. Ezekiel, the main man, Elliot, had six. I agree. Gurley was a touchdown scoring machine. Uh, caught the ball out of the backfield, would utilize a little bit better. Uh, runs out in space better this year opposed to the, the previous years especially catching the ball and doing crazy fantastic things Gurley st finally stayed healthy but but now there's reports now that Gurley have some type of knee issue and could be a diabetic and some whole bunch of other stuff that's going on so that 45 or that 40 million guaranteed money it got in a lot of GMs nervous and sweating about their prime time running back I think that the Chicago Bears they was talking about hey we don't mind putting Jordan Howard on the trading blocks. <laughs> we don't mind letting him walk. And that's the guy that was comparable to Ezekiel Elliott his rookie year. A lot of people saying that the Chicago Bears ran, ran off with the plug with that. So th those are things that, that running backs' careers always last uh, collectively as it relates to the average length of a running back career. It's three years. So... I don't see, and I'm not trying to throw any salt or shade at Ezekiel Elliott. I just don't see Ezekiel Elliott at this pace running into his third contract. Maybe you can get some production from his second contract opposed to his first similar. But until the Cowboys realize that, they're going to have to get some help for Ezekiel Elliott. That's the bottom line. <laughs> that is the truth. Uh, yes, we are still praying for Michael Irvin. Hope that everything is well. Uh, the man upstairs knows for exactly what's going on. And everything happens for a reason. And hopefully uh, he can survive this because I know the playmaker is a fighter. He is one heck of a fighter. Yeah, Kerry Teagle, man, yeah, appreciate you. Uh, we couldn't we couldn't keep Keith Smith or we could have kept Keith Smith opposed to a Jamez Olawale. <laughs> yeah. Use running backs for their first five years and then re 
draft them. This is Dre the Great. Yeah. All right. Well, Steve Berman. Yeah. <laughs> Whoop. <laughs> yes, indeed, man. Yes, indeed. So with all that being said, any other questionings uh, about this uh, particular, uh, I guess, tacos or, or J.T.J. Watt, J.J. Watt, little brother? Did he get the diagnosed with throat cancer or did he just get get it checked out? This is from Thomas Willer. Uh, as far as the throat cancer, uh, they need a biop. And uh, what they do is, from my understanding with the biop, is that they cut a little piece of the throat, the tissue, and they send it off to a lab. And and they and with the lab report, they uh, just check to see whether or not it's cancerous cells. And uh, if it comes back with cancerous cells, then, then they go through the process of... Uh, of, of some type of removal of that uh, cell that's in his throat or what have you, and uh, and, and, and it's just that's just how it goes. Hopefully, it's, hopefully it's benign, or this is what they say. If it's non-cancerous, and they can just tough medicate it from there. If not, then uh, they have to do some type of uh, uh, I don't want to say chemotherapy, but they have to do some type of whatever extraction that they do with cancer, you know, to get it out of there. That's my limited knowledge of it. Uh, we, all we can do is just pray for the playmaker and hopefully uh, uh, we can all, you know, hear a good report from that down the line. Uh, Aaron Robertson says, what's up with Quinn, though? <laughs> you know what's holding down Robert Quinn's situation? The uh, this is what holding down Robert Quinn's situation. The, the Dolphins It's nothing to do with him. The Dolphins are looking for the highest bidder. Remember, I said this right here. Deadline makes deals, so um, look for around the draft. Nothing shake loose then, and then around the draft time when the high impulse is there, and when the Dolphins look at whoever they got on the draft board and they draft a defensive edge rusher, and they say, "Oh yeah, now we can part ways. Now we feel comfortable parting ways with Robert Quinn." And I heard that Robert Quinn got his little back issues as well. So those are things that we have to take in mind and considerations. Yes, indeed. All right, so let's see what we got right here. The NFL draft is in 28 days. Ooh-wee. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Derek Tips, do you think they're trying to get Hearns to take a pay cut to free up 2.5 for Lawrence? Um, I don't know. Um, but I think that they still would want that pay cut. Remember... Uh, the, the money that we have left after we pay D Law is going to be around 24, maybe 25 million. You still got to pay your draftees to whoever you draft. And then there is another wave of free agencies that happen after the draft that you might want to stick your toe in the water on. Meaning that if you think that a Sue can take you over the top after the draft and he's still sitting there, maybe you could throw him a deal for like seven to eight million. Uh, with, with incentives for one year rental or there may be a trade Boston out there that's still after the draft that if he's not picked up you can throw him some coins if you didn't get the person that you wanted in the draft and then on top of that um, the, the, was it Ziggy Ansa for the uh, Detroit Lions he may be available after the draft if nobody make a move on him so there, there's some movements out there that could be done remember the draft is a long 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 process but then it's after the draft there's a sweet uh or i guess sweet roster look up meaning that the sweet picks that they got they can say well this veteran guy is no longer usable we're going to just release this guy and a lot of people gonna be a lot of shock and all and they say well we'll, we'll take a look at this guy but you got to have some money to play with it, right? So that could be the scenario if they ask Hearns to take a pay cut. All right, guys. Any other questionings before I run? Stellos, Pan D. Law, <laughs> DeMarcus, where DeMarco Murray went to the filthy and was paid his money. McCoy got rushing title and DeMarco lasted a year. And got traded to the Titans. Things that makes you go, hmm. Now this is good, good, good considerations right there from Stellos. 
I mean, we let we let DeMarco Murray walk, right? And then they got uh, uh, McCoy. He ain't, he ain't got a rushing title. And uh, he didn't do anything, too, when he went to the Buffalo Bills. So, yeah, it's always things to think about. Uh, uh, Thomas Willer says, Jalen is a next year, I believe, far as the uh, – I don't know how Jalen's going to look at it uh, as far as as far as what type of money he's going to demand out there. But we'll find out down the line. Uh, <laughs> uh, is it Pink Floyd says, uh, is David Irvin still playing? Nah, he's not. He's not playing. <laughs> he, but he's blazing. I guarantee you that. I guarantee you he's blazing. He's not playing, but he's blazing. And that's amazing, right? <laughs> Shout out to David Irvin. And his beliefs and his trials and tribulations, right? Shout out to him. Um, may he continue to strive for to fight the things that he believes in. <laughs> A man is known by what he believes in, right? So continue to fight and keep the faith in what you believe in. <laughs> they say, who you believe in, hit this weed and grieve. It's a cold it's a world. Kill you in your sleep, watch me. Yes, that's what this word. And we out. And we out. We multiply, right?
right, Cowboy Nation. Bandwagon fans are welcome. <laughs> they are. They are. They are. They are. Salute.